Asian Station. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace and peace and blessings to all the listeners out there. Welcome to Life as it is on your favorite Nation Station 90.4 FM. Today I'm joined by our dear friend Hatim Abdus Salam and Ahmad Al Matani for a new, fresh, and exciting episode. The title of which is Islamophobia. Again, I understand this is a topic which has been discussed for the first time here, at least in the uh, English language. And this is something which is very crucial since it's been going on around the world and it's mm-hmm. accelerating and picking up. Uh, unfortunately, not many people uh, talk about it. So there's a lot of gray area as to how to uh, react when uh, dealt with uh, mm-hmm. the Islamophobia. The number to call today is 2460-2058. We shall be taking your calls online, inshallah ta'ala soon. And let's get the show on the road. So, Ahmed. Well, um, thank you so much for having me here on the show. I'm so happy to be with you guys. And as you said, you know, it's a very sensitive uh, sensitive topic, and but it's very important to be discussed. Mm-hmm. And this is why, you know, we've decided to dedicate, you know, one whole episode, you know, for, for the topic. Exactly. And especially with what's happening in the region nowadays, you know, I think it might be accelerated even more with the recent, you know, events. So I think, you know, it's um, it's very crucial to talk about it. Now, most of the people would think that maybe this is a new phenomenon that is just happening now, mm-hmm. or is it only happening for to to Muslims? Right. But this has been happening for a very long time, since the time, the beginning of creation, exactly. right. with Prophet Adam mm-hmm. and the rest of the <coughs> Prophet. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, something new, it's not even towards Islam, mm-hmm. it's not only in the 21st century that Islam has been um, classified uh, as... Uh, the religion of terrorism or the religion that threats people's life and uh, people having fear uh, of Islam. Uh, maybe later on we'll share, we'll share some points about, exactly. um, you know, why do people fear about Islam exactly. mm-hmm. and what's happening. Or religion in general. Yeah. 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 yeah, a lot of people out there, they say, well, I don't believe in any organized religion. I'm just spiritual. Mm-hmm. So there is... Uh, uh, a distrust and a fear of any form of religion, and if we see in the in the teachings of the Quran, the uh, number of other uh, prophets throughout the era, they have been called Muslims, and this is like a generic label which refers to anybody who submits willfully to the will of the Creator. Correct. So it's not something new, uh, mm-hmm. like like you have mentioned, and all of them were, uh, you know, efforts were made to discredit them. Uh, to call them names, uh, to a number of them were attacked uh, physically. Some of them were were even killed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so uh, I mean, if you're going to be an ambassador of the Creator God Almighty, then then be ready. This kind of treatment will be dished at you. Exactly. It's part of the test, you know. Yeah. Um. The the more faith you have, the more trial and test you will have on this uh, life. Yeah, and this is part of the, the the whole process, actually. Exactly. Yeah. And and you see, in, in terms of the this particular term called Islamophobia, yes. uh, which can be expanded to view as the opposition of the truth, or yes. the opposition of justice, or or opposition of the, uh, uh, the 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 message of the Creator, which is sent to the creation. So, uh, in, in terms of the word uh, Islamophobia. Uh, it's the defini- There are a number of definitions available on the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one I liked was dislike of or prejudice against Islam or Muslims due to their faith. And the term itself is 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 quite old. It's it goes back to the 1900s when the uh, uh, the West African Muslims were treated by the uh, French colonists. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not something new, but it's it's getting a lot of uh, attention in the media lately. Uh, still, most people, th- they're quite ignorant about what it means and how to deal with it and what's the right way of dealing with it. Yeah, and I found also another interesting definition, which is very close you know, to what you have just mentioned, which is the idea of um, close-minded prejudice mm-hmm. okay, against or hated or hatred of Islam and Muslims. Right. You know, the idea of a closed-minded, you know, that's, that's a very interesting, you know, like... Um, Exactly. Thing that I found, you know, about the definition and the idea of a prejudice or discrimination or judging before 
you know something exactly and and like a, uh, you know there is a lack of information or or misinformation mm-hmm. and uh, it again takes us back to the other episode with it about the the mind invasion where there is just an explosion of information and we have a tendency to believe just anything and everything and the uh, and one of the reasons is that that you know we are being lazy we we don't like to to yeah. investigate and 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 if you uh, look at this thing uh, in in terms in the in our recent memory again this is not new uh, jews were demonized for years before uh, the these uh, phrase of antisemitism came up mm-hmm. okay and and they were demonized so much that the holocaust took place which was uh, was really really tragic mm-hmm. no one should be persecuted uh, through what they went through and then later on we, we realized that the same kind of treatment was given to communism mm-hmm. there was a character assassination of communism I, i'm not saying that you know communism was right but what i'm saying is that the again the advantage that certain uh, entities took was that there was a gap of information mm-hmm. and again the 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 thing is this time around it's islam mm-hmm. so like one of the uh, prime ministers of a very big a uh, non-muslim country said that islamophobia is the new antisemitism mm. so we're looking at all fears and new threats yeah and you know maybe we should talk about you know like a new term also associated with with the term islamophobia which is uh islamophobe which mm-hmm. is a person who adopts this kind of belief okay um and i found very interesting you know article talking about you know three groups okay of people who have this kind of you know um belief system which is you know the 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 hate or the fear of islam mm-hmm. the first one is called uh inner core and uh when we talk about inner core we're not just talking about people but it could be also organizations right and um the, they're they're trying to um actually um these inner four uh cores uh their primary purpose is to promote this kind of hatred or prejudice and uh and also the work is very clear mm. and you can see it so they have the purpose they believe in it okay and what they try to promote for it okay so they believe in it and they try to do some work uh, regularly to promote you know for such a thing and then we have what we call auto core okay uh auto core means you know the people whose primary purpose does not appear to what to hate islam so in you know when you meet them you know they seem to be peaceful happy and so on but they work actually behind the scenes okay does support you know what the attack against you know islam mm-hmm. and then we have you know the third one which is what of concern and basically um they they um their primary purpose is um is is to to support you know the idea okay but the work does not regularly dist- demonstrate or support the you know the concept of islamophobia mm mm-hmm. so you see like there are some people who are showing that and they do some work there are some people who do not show that uh they what they um they they hate islam for example but they what participate in a lot of work or they support a lot of work and we have another group that you know they 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 don't support the idea of islam or they hate islam but they are not involved in any kind of what work to against mm-hmm. islam i just mm-hmm. wanted to clarify something now is it when you say islamophobia is it the hate of the religion of islam or is it the fear from the religion of islam because these are two different things uh, yeah you uh, fear something yeah. because you it is threatening your life it is threatening your sources mm-hmm. you know uh, things like that but hate is something totally different Oh. Yeah, but, I would like to yeah. just take it one step further. It could be the fear of some of the extreme minority of Muslims who are projected in the media most of the time. So a lot of people uh don't know about the doctrines of Islam and the the proof for that is that when Islam is presented to them, a number of staunch opponents of Islam, they end up reverting. Mm-hmm. They end up reverting to Islam. No, but still uh, what yeah. I'm asking is islamophobia is it hate towards islam or is it fear towards uh, islam both terms are used yeah. yeah but are there two categories of people yeah people who are see, you know fearing islam and people who hate islam see the thing is uh 
there could be either or scenario. Mm -hmm. The way I look at it is it starts with fear. If I don't know you as a person and Mm -hmm. somebody else tells me Hatim is like that, Hatim is like this, uh, initially I'll start fearing you. And if that gap is let to be increased, you know, there's a gulf and there's no information. I haven't had first-hand information, uh, first-hand contact with you. Then that fear will translate into hate. There's Mm -hmm. a strong chance the fear will translate into hate. I would say it's a result of that fear. Yeah. Of fear. Cause and effect. So, yeah. So they are very interconnected. So first of all, you start, you know, uh, fearing something. As a result of that fear, you will tend to hate that concept. There's an argument that uh, why should people, you know, put focus into this Islamophobia thing? Um, is it a myth? Is it happening? Because uh, the majority of the people of the world they might not even know what is the religion of Islam. They've never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, through traveling uh, to many countries, people ask me, you know, where f- where are you from? And, you know, what religion are you? And when I say Islam, they say, is this part of Catholicism? Mm. Is right. it part of Christianity? Is it Jewish? Mm-hmm. You know, they, they have never heard of Islam. So how can they fear something or how can they hate something? Fear of the unknown. But uh, they don't know. And and we are we are to blame for this thing because we're not doing da'wah. We're not propagating Islam the way we should. We're not inviting other people to the way of the Creator, which is our primary job. After all, we are all ambassadors of, uh, of God Almighty. And also in terms of ideologies, you know, Islam promotes a lot of... Um, good principles when it comes to, which could clash with a lot of interest you know for a lot of industry and companies and so on so i think you know like sometimes you know like they don't wait you know till people get to know islam they want to create this fear okay yes. before it gets to people's you know heads and minds and i and lives and so on so i think you know like uh, this is the strategy you know used by a lot of people Mm-hmm. They now, do it before it happens. But for some um, some of the uh, non-Muslims out there who are listening to us today, they want to know the fact, the truth from mm. the Muslims. Yeah. Is Islam a threat? No, it's not. As and a concept or as a reality? Both. Yeah, both. Because, you know, we, we need to distinguish. Because both is important. Yeah, yeah. If you're talking only about the concept and you're not covering the reality, it's something... Well, uh, you, which you which see, does not make sense. See, yeah. how, how so you need to see both yeah. the, the thing from is, the concept and from the reality side. Yeah. Uh, see, w- Islam is not only theoretical; mm. it's it's practical, and it has been shown to to the world more than fourteen hundred and thirty seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, we need to clarify the difference between the teachings of Islam mm-hmm. and what some extreme minority Muslims are doing. So there's a huge difference. So unfortunately, uh, now what we say okay, is you want to... Okay, you said something else. E- extreme minority Muslims. So yeah. these are our Muslims. Yeah, they call themselves Muslims yeah. and we, we cannot doubt it. If, if somebody comes up to, to us and he says, uh, you know, Assalamu alaikum, my name is Muhammad and, you know, I'm your Muslim brother, there's no way we can doubt that. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I so mean, even even though their their conduct is totally contradicting contradicting the teachings of Islam, well, we can they are re- still Muslims. Well, they are saying so we cannot we don't know what's in their heart maybe they are ignorant maybe so they are doing it that, on purpose maybe does that mean that everyone who claims to be a Muslim is a Muslim well you know like that's another another debatable issue okay um, first of all you know do we measure you know the Islamic teachings you know based on the religion itself or the or by the people who are practicing the religion then if we make a clear distinction between the two okay then I think we'll not have an issue Okay, well, you cannot guarantee that all Muslims will represent Islam the way it should be. So sometimes we cannot guarantee this in, in, in a lot of situations. So I think in order to, to really major, okay, the, the truth or the, the, the true message of Islam, we have to go to the authentic sources in order to find out the true message of Islam. But for many non-Muslims, the way they understand it that these Muslims behave this way because this is derived from their religion, because yeah. they got this from their religion. They yeah. might, sp- for example, if I if I say uh, a person who is a revert to mm-hmm. Islam, he might be a, a peaceful person before Islam. Correct. And then when he became a Muslim, he started to become radical and and uh, an extremist. Yeah. So it means that is- Islam has affected his conduct. Not, yeah, not so necessarily. it's from the teachings of Islam. Not necessarily. It that, could that, be- that would be the argument. Yeah, but not necessarily. It could be 
first of all because of the people around him mm-hmm. and the way we convey the message the way we teach you know the message to these people okay we might be wrong uh, let's say um, interpreter you know for the messages of Islam sometimes the wrong interpretation for the Islamic teachings could lead to such a thing and this is what we are facing you know nowadays wrong interpretations uh, wrong explanations for a lot of our teachings because at the, at the end of the day hat we need to to have this as a fact okay people are limited regardless whether they have you know the you know the knowledge the education qualifications and so on it doesn't matter okay we are still limited and this limitations could really in, explain why we could have wrong interpretations what what do you mean by limited limited you know like we're human beings at the end of the day we okay. don't know so everything we are, we are not uh, how do they say it in english Inval- infallible infallible from, yeah. from, from yeah. making mistakes exactly. yeah. at the end of the day we are humans we see are human beings, we're yeah. supposed to have good company we're supposed to stay close to the sources and people of knowledge who are who are preaching according to the sources the other thing is uh, just to answer your question we need to look at how many reverts have actually been radicalized and look at the the ratio the percentage uh you know it's common knowledge ever since uh, humanity has started to collect statistics as you know as in modern day and age the fastest growing way of life which we call in arabic deen not religion because it has a more comprehensive mm. definition mm. has been islam mm. uh, it has been in in guinness book of world records as long as they were recording it and in every other land be it far east be it europe be it uh, the americas okay and if you look at the current state of muslims it's not exactly in a very good shape the the persecution and the oppression and what they're going through all over the globe and still humanity is reverting towards the truth okay but but the thing is muhammad are the majority of muslims responsible for the act of the minority of those who, who claim to be muslim no they're not i mean i would like to throw the same question you know is is the whole christianity responsible for what hitler did to the mm-hmm. jews should they, the, should, the they, should they should should they be wars, you know? yeah should they be the apologizing on his behalf to every single jew mm-hmm. okay so the thing that we need to you know make it very clear is that we have like 1.6 billion muslims around the globe mm-hmm. yeah and what's, growing what's what's the, the the fraction of percentage of muslims yeah out of this population that have gone extreme that are causing all this uh these nonsense what so, is going on so, mm-hmm. someone has to do the math on that to be honest i don't have access to those stats maybe somebody has already crunched uh, numbers and 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 done something mm-hmm. but but you see look at it there are so many muslim lands who are existing in peace and you know if you want to discount the current situation go back 10 years mm-hmm. go back 15 mm-hmm. years when a number of our close neighbors they were enjoying peace and harmony mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. look at the situation of minorities living under the islamic majority at that time and look at the same uh, non muslim minorities living under chaos and and anar- anarchy now because the central command and control is, is breaking down mm. okay and same thing happened in in spain if you want to go back and if you're, you you want to be a student of history all right and this is documented by the intellectuals that the most peace and tolerance and harmony that they enjoyed was under the muslim rule but you know like at the same talk you know what about the situation now i mean i mean i totally agree with you in terms of history um you know we had a lot of stories you know like um saying what you have just mentioned but at the same time we also have incidents where um muslims are trying to harass you know non muslims so how would you respond to this you know also um claims well they'll have their accountability because like hatim said initially you know what if you say you're a muslim and then whatever you're thinking or doing is totally contrary to the teachings of islam mm-hmm. all right so the the thing is uh, the the book should be thrown at them if possible in this world if not god will take care of them in the, in in the hereafter mm. but just because somebody carries a label of islam doesn't mean uh, gives them a right to act badly because it, that should put more responsibility on you now you're an ambassador of the mm. creator you should be more in peace and harmony and tolerance all right uh, just uh, before we continue our discussion the number to call is 2460205 8 Again, two four six zero two zero five eight. 
So do call in and join the conversation. And we'd like also to uh, remind you all that we have a Facebook page. It's called Life As It Is. And you can find all uh, the the tips about the discussions that we have mm-hmm. yeah. on the shows. Mm-hmm. And you will have also an audio copy of uh, the previous episodes that we have. So on a daily basis, we upload these episodes uh, on, on the YouTube. And we are also adding some very relevant links that... Uh, we are sure would be beneficial. You'll not only enjoy them, they're good entertainment, but you'll also get valuable lessons out of them. All right, uh, let's take it to the uh, to the next topic. Uh, sticking to Islamophobia, where do you think it's it's more prominent, or or where 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 do you think we we find this thing? Most most probably in the West. Most probably in, in the West. In terms of perceiving it, yeah. Yeah, but mm. I, I wouldn't uh, really confine it to the West. Even even now, um, um, in, in the and the Arab world, it is there. In the Asian uh, world as, as well, it is there. Mm-hmm. For um, you would see the uh, minority of um, other religions who are li- living in on Islamic lands. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, recently, they have been uh, prosecuted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these are acts of Few, few, a few black mm-hmm. ships of the mm. of, of the of the religion mm. that claim to be Muslims, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, uh, the mainstream media uh, propagates this exactly and, uh, yeah. and magnifies it and exactly. makes it uh, a big deal. That's that's mm. the key word actually. <clears throat> how how the the media plays a role actually in making things and you know, all seem to be really big, you know, uh, and and this is what we're suffering from actually. Nobody talks about, you know, the good things that we do in everyday life, okay? Good news never sell. Exactly. <laughs> so they focus more on, on the minority that um, tend to do all these kind of things. And, you know, a lot of people pay the price. Now, you know, you go around, you know, you might be killed because of somebody's action. One person out of, I don't know, millions of people, you know, with... Uh, make other people under threat because of such an action. Exactly. It, it always makes me think, like when you look at the, the bias coverage of most of the mainstream media, not all of them, we see that anytime there is a, and I'm going to use this word, uh, a person of brown skin, his whole background is mentioned in the news. Mm. But if it's somebody of, <coughs> a, of a lighter skin, mm. then it's just a lone wolf. Mm. Uh, it's mm. a, you know, It's just a... Uh, somebody with with mental uh, issue. It's somebody yeah. who needs psychiatric help. Mm. It's somebody oops who was drunk. It's somebody who needs help. Yeah. All like, right. Like, and it's like, just brushed under the carpet. You never get to hear yeah, about it like, again. Like, like the, uh, the the hate crime that <coughs> happened in uh, yes. last year, I think, or the beginning of this year, that uh, the three Muslims that were shot. Yeah. By their neighbor. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, uh, you know, there was not much coverage, uh, coverage in the media yeah. and it was just a normal crime yeah. that just happened in a, in a neighborhood. Right. But if it was the other way around that a Muslim has shot someone, then it, it would have been a big deal. They would have run that video clip yeah. years after that yeah. To, yeah. to remind everyone, even if somebody has forgotten. So he, here comes the point that should we be apologetic with all these double standards are, that are out there? No, we should yeah. not. And this, should is, not. this is this is the scary trend I see that each time something happens, uh, you know, we we feel a, a, a guilt, a, a guilt trip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, and we're like, oh my God, I hope it's not a Muslim. Well, you see, the <laughs> thing should be so what if he is or she is. They have to. Everyone pay. is accountable yeah, for their everybody own actions. Action, Every, yeah. Everybody is accountable for their own deeds, mm-hmm. and and everybody is equal uh, under the eyes of the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and the sad thing is the these uh, these instances which are not just verbal, but they, they get into physical harassment and sometimes bodily injury and death. They, they're yeah. increasing. Yeah. All right, uh, we got a caller on the line. Can 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 we get him on the line? Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. I'm Shaheen with you. Yes, sister. Uh, you have rightly said that the, it is the minority of the Muslims who are maligning the name of Islam. Mm-hmm. And if that is the case, then what happens to the majority of the Muslims? And if we consider the majority to be good, shouldn't we, the majority, then take up the key role of portraying the correct picture of Islam within our, our own spheres and within our own roles that we are playing? on a day-to-day, everyday basis with people whom we are dealing with, because then it becomes an incumbent responsibility on people like us to be actually telling the world what Islam is all about. Definitely. So rather than, you know, criticizing and looking down at the minority of the black sheep of our community, 
I think we really have to take up a very major role and portray the correct picture of Islam to the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's correct. Thank you for your call, sister. Uh, 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 what, what I would like to say on this is this is very important. Generally, Muslims have a uh, a reactive strategy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have a proactive uh, methodology. Mm-hmm. If an event happens, then everybody will start screaming at, at, at you know in the media. That is, if they get any airtime, that this they is will not. They start protesting yeah, and they, burning flags. Well, yeah. some of them again the sometimes. again the extreme yeah. minority, yeah. Yeah. and they will provide fuel to the mainstream media again because then after the event they will start showing coverage of. Uh, how they are behaving how muslims but, are angry. exactly but but what you see if you look at all the muslim bodies which are uh, around the world especially in the west and uh, especially the leading scholars of islam mm. they give statements on most of these events yes that mm. this is not islamic it yeah. has nothing to do with islam they open up their 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 masjid so people can but come but the question and, is but Muhammad, it's too little too late and and yeah. it's not covered by the mainstream Muhammad, media the question again. is again is it beneficial is it you know are we being apologetic for anything that is being yes, happened yes we are being yeah. unfortunately uh, yeah. even even if we if we go out there in the in the mainstream media and say no this is not islam will it stop it from happening again no no yeah it, it won't but so I, I guess, I see, guess. the thing is we need to highlight the causes also mm-hmm. while we are condemning the, the the physical act we need to we need to communicate to the masses that look guys this is the, some of the reasons why this is happening mm-hmm. i'm sure everybody is interested well most of the people are interested in reducing such incidents mm. yes nobody nobody wants to see this happen to to their family yeah. so so tell us uh, yeah. mohammed wh- why is it happening why are muslim some of the muslims acting aggressively well, towards y- others you see there is a lot of frustration and there's a lot of anger and and aggression which has been uh, tied up for a long time mm-hmm. and if you look at statistics and these are compiled again by the bodies from the west this is not uh, you know m- muslim predominantly mm-hmm. uh, media uh, uh, statistics they okay the thing is if if again I'll, and i'll tell you let's just go back 10 years i'm sure we can all uh, you know uh, think what was going on uh, 10 years ago in the region yeah and these events were almost non existent mm. they were almost never heard of because it's a principle li- of live and let live mm. you know muslims were led mm. to live peacefully in their lands and there was almost no reaction and no backlash it was only after these invasions and you know whatever is happening in in the region uh that the, so much uh, tyranny was dished out and so much cruelty was done on children on women and you know people saw the video footage again and again and they saw the pictures in the print media all right and some of them they 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 resorted to violence they started to show their frustration in this way and and this is a known fact that the policy of war is good for certain entities Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, not everybody likes war. Majority people don't like war. But the reality of the world is the world is run by minority. Hmm. Okay. So there are certain entities, and think about it peacefully, who do not want war. War hmm. is bad for business hmm. unless you are in the business of war. Yeah. Yes. So this is a hint I'm giving yeah. you all. Okay. So there are certain entities they just can't accept peace at any cost. Yeah. So they will keep on creating these circumstances and these excuses mm. and this what do you call clash of civilization mm. which it is it is not. Okay? And they will keep on getting people fighting each other and killing each other because it's good for their business. And provoke them. Yeah. Exactly because most of because the time people are being provoked. Because yeah, because yeah. if you look at it, Islamophobia is is mostly hate speech, and and it's it incites violence. Yeah. All right, we're going towards our first break, and we will be back on air shortly. The number to call is two four six zero two zero five eight. Do call in and share us with your comments and your valuable feedback. Lulu BMW Dream Drive. This season, luxury awaits you at Lulu. Shop and win six BMW X5 35i and other fabulous prizes. With every purchase of 10 rials, get a chance to win up to six BMW X5 35i and 30 Icon products like 48-inch LED TVs, top-load automatic washing machines, air coolers, halogen air fryers, tablets, and lots more. Shop at Lulu today and stand to drive home your dream. Promotion valid till 5th August 2015. Lulu, where the world comes to shop. How about winning a feature-packed 1.8-litre engine car for free this Ramadan? The Geely M Grand 7 can be yours. Just WhatsApp your name, location, and say that one thing you liked most about Geely, and you could become the lucky winner to own one. Send your WhatsApp message to 9440666 today. Anyone can win a Geely M Grand 7 this Ramadan. Terms and conditions apply. 
when I step into my bank, I like a warm and friendly welcome. When I avail of a service, I expect quick transactions. When I'm banking, I look for products designed around my needs. At Bank Soha, our journey towards service excellence begins with you. We are committed to facilitating your goals with customized products and prompt assistance, marking your journey with remarkable milestones. Make a difference to your banking experience with Bank Soha. Call 24730000 today. Life is a journey, and through this journey, we come across all challenges. These challenges makes us better human beings. We Dear listeners, welcome back. The topic we're discussing today is Islamophobia and I'm joined by Hatim Abdul Salam and Ahmad Al Matani. So Hatim, yes. We have discussed about some of the reasons for the Islamophobia. Now let me ask you this, are these reasons actually justified? Like as an example, if you meet somebody who's uh, not a Muslim and he's visiting mm. Oman for the first time. Yes. Okay. What, what would you ask him? Well, actually, I don't see a valid reason to have this phobia of Islam and Muslims, mm-hmm. especially for the majority of the world who have never met a Muslim, they've never heard of mm. Islam in their entire life. Yeah, they've never encountered uh, aggression from mm. a Muslim. And uh, if you see today, uh, the weakest countries on earth are the Muslim countries. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We are less in numbers, we are less in weapons, we are less in everything. Mm-hmm. So normally you fear you fear about you fear of someone who is superior to you, mm-hmm. who is more powerful than you, mm. yeah, who can dominate on you, mm-hmm. who has had aggression against you, who has had invasions on you. Mm-hmm. But none of that is happening. <laughs> you exactly. Know, to, yeah. well, we should we should have fear of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we should have the fear of of, of 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 the West. Right. But it's the other way around. So it doesn't make sense to me. Exactly. For a person to say that no, we have Islamophobia, and many of the many of the uh, many of the uh, Europeans who visit Oman, for example, they would say that Oman is more peaceful than my own country. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah so they do. Yeah. They do say so that. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a total contradiction and illusion mm-hmm. that is out there, mm-hmm. that there is, a, there is a huge fear and phobia of Islam and Muslims. It doesn't just make, it doesn't exactly. make sense at all. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and again, this is uh, primarily mainstream mm-hmm. media driven. And you can highlight to them that, you know, look at all the uh, people of other faiths and no faiths living yeah. in Oman for the last four or five decades. And they're enjoying law and order and peace. And, you know, they're raising their families yeah. and uh, living among Muslims. And, you know, they're doing business and in a in number of cases mm-hmm. making more money than the Muslims mm-hmm. living over here. I, I know I know a lot of uh, expatriates who are working here in, in Oman, for example. And they say that, you know, if we have the choice not to leave, we'll, we'll stay, we'll stay here, here. Exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good environment yeah. to raise our children. Exactly. Yeah? And, and, you know, like this brings us to the question, you know, then if we are weak, as people who are supposed to represent, you know, the religion. Even okay. peop- even states. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. So, if we are weak, then what makes, you know, these people create this kind of propaganda, okay? I would call it, you know, a negative propaganda about Islam. Maybe, you know, this is something to do with back to the idea of the teachings of the religion. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have, as we said before, we need to make a clear distinction between the Muslims who are practicing Islam and the true message of Islam. All right, yeah. we got another caller online. Uh, yeah. Just get him online. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, brother? Good, alhamdulillah. May I know who's calling? Yeah, my name is Dr. Mukhtar Ali, and I was just listening to your discussion, and I really get uh, impressed. I mean, this is really a good topic to discuss right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Just, just, I, I just, just I listened all the causes. Uh, I mean, you've been discussing regarding why why the Islamophobia is spreading all over the world. All right. Yeah. Just I want to make some additions. I mean, I was just thinking maybe. Okay. Uh, they, yeah. Because the, what the what, what the causes you dis, you people discuss they are more at public level or individual level. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately. Being on, on a wider perspective, if we see at, I mean, political level and at media level, this is more being propagated. Right. I mean, I, I have been working in European countries for years, mm-hmm. and I found out that people, they, the religion is the last thing people used to discuss 
or religion is the last thing people used to differ with. I mean, I've, I've been having very good relations with different uh, religions. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what, what my perception is that, uh, that at political level, this thing has been propagated massively. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and after, especially after 9-11, mm-hmm. this thing has spreaded all over the world. Before that, if the world was more safe, and mm-hmm. religion was the last thing people used to care about. Mm-hmm. But, but after that, the whole perspective has been changed. And it, it, I mean, this is my perception, maybe I'm wrong, but it's not more on an in, individual or personal level. Mm-hmm. But the Islamophobia is more like a political, uh, I mean, it's a political gimmick they mm-hmm. are trying to... Exactly. Gain with. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Doctor. We really appreciate your call. This is a very interesting point that uh, you have made. Uh, actually, he, he does have weight to it. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, uh, before there was a common enemy and it was called communism. Mm. Mm. Okay. And once that went away, you know, there is a saying, we always need a mm. common enemy to unite us. Mm. The next boogeyman which was identified was falsely, of course, was Islam. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, he is correct. And if you look at the statistics, again, by the uh, bodies which are uh, which originate from the West, mm. there was a spike and it's just growing now after 9-11. But the fact, Muhammad, that the doctor was highlighting is the majority of the Europeans and the people in the West are very peaceful and very they are. loving mm. yes, they towards are. everyone. Yeah. And as he mentioned, that <coughs> religion was the last thing that people discuss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they don't differ- differentiate when it comes to religion. Mm-hmm. And even today, when you go to many of the European countries, people don't really bother about bother, yeah. Uh, yeah. where you come from or what's your religion or what's your faith. They, 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 this is the least of their interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, as a state, uh, then on a poli- political, uh, you know, I mean, uh, forum, yeah, yeah. platform, then that's that's where the problem is, where exactly. it is really propagated. Exactly. And I guess, you know, also they were talking about, you know, the spiritual emptiness, you know, that a lot of people, you know, had to go through for so many years because there's this kind of separation between religion and the state, mm. okay, in these countries. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, eventually will have to go back to something, you know, that make them, you know, fully spiritual yes mm-hmm. and when they did not find that you know in their lives you know they started looking for other options yes. and i think you know i was i was i was listening to a lecture and they were talking about the idea uh, of um of islam invading you know europe yes okay uh, it's a threat, you know, for a lot of, you know, religions. Because okay. of the number of immigrants the, the moving on to Europe. The number of immigrants, to, to, to you know, the, the, mm. the Muslim, you know, communities usually um, are big, you know, in terms of families and so on. So th- they tend to 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 um, to make, you know, these uh, ideas, you know, like big uh, to the people. So when, when people started to feel empty from inside, they start looking for something, you know, to fill that emptiness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the options available for them is Islam. So when when people started to feel that you know people are converting or reverting to Islam, that created this kind of what game? Okay, what makes you know we should we should come up with an idea or a, a weapon if you want to call it a, a mental weapon that uh, will make these people get scared of the teaching of this religion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, you see, I would like to add something. You know, people talk about uh, and there's a lot of. Uh, these you know short scary videos created by God knows who on on the internet, and they talk about you know Islam taking over over the Europe. Europe you, yeah. you see, the thing is, uh, first of all, uh, if people in 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 Europe they decide not to get married and not to have you know children and mm. not to have big families, then this is their choice, right? Yeah. So they should not blame Muslims for that. The other thing is, initially, the brains. Muslim brains were attracted towards the West, mm. the PhDs and the, uh, the, the doctors, masters, the yeah. doctors, the, the engineers. engineers. Mm. So nobody was complaining because th- this was good addition to the society. You mm. went as a grad student and yeah. you decided to stay there and get married and, you know, just call it your home. Yeah. The and the thing other is, thing, the doors are open. 
yeah they are welcome there exactly welcome, but, yeah. but see the thing is when uh, certain uh, you know countries of the west they just started bombing the 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 countries in uh, the the muslim countries and then there was a chaos and anarchy a lot of those people they started to flee their areas mm-hmm. so you cannot blame them now we see all these terrible stories about people try, you know getting sunk on the boats and they're trying to run away from their homelands towards europe and then mm. certain countries won't accept them and then it's a big hue and cry but we need to look at the root cause what's mm. making them flee their countries is it really their fault who wants to mm. leave their country exactly. yeah, yeah. everybody loves yeah. their exactly. own country yeah. as a last resort yeah you know you decide to go out when you just see that there is absolutely no hope yeah so we need to see who's doing this to their homeland so you cannot scream now that refugees are coming and you know they're just taking over and you know you, you can't do that while well, you are the main cause for exactly. for, for yeah. the, exactly. the turbulence in their country exactly and and you know if we can add you know one cause you know to the the, the to to have such a concept or phenomenon in our societies or in the world is is the education I would call it. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by education is the idea of first of all Muslims getting educated about their own religion, okay? And the other thing is what how can we also educate people other people who are not Muslims about Islam? Exactly, doing dawah. Doing dawah exactly. So look, we have a problem. We have a lot of Muslims who do not know anything about Islam. Yes. They are Muslims only by birth, birth okay, or by inheritance. Okay. by name yeah by name okay they were born muslims and they don't know anything about islam and we have this disease you know that we are suffering from nowadays which is the idea of being you know specialized in one area hmm. like for example i think we mentioned this before but let's you know emphasize it again you know like a, a person who is you know like who's supposed to be knowledgeable about islam has to have certain specifications or qualifications or it becomes like a job hmm. you know like an imam or a preacher while in reality every muslim has to have you know a good level of education when it comes to his or her religion and we suffer from this okay mm-hmm. it's only because uh you're an imam you have to know about your religion no this is you know a wrong exactly. concept and this is what also create you know the idea of being invaded invaded you know from outside in terms of wrong ideologies and people who are having you know like Uh you, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The idea of of not being uh, equipped with the needed knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to fighting back, you know, and trying to clarify the the concepts of of, of uh, Okay, Islam. we have our first call for today. Um our first guest is uh brother Talib from the United States. Assalamu alaikum brother. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you brother? I'm good today, alhamdulillah. How's everything? By the mercy and grace of Allah, everything is uh, going well. How's Ramadan with you? It's going great. Alhamdulillah, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit tested with the, the heat this year, but mashallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Wonderful. Okay. Brother Talib, you're uh, you're from the United States, and uh, today we're talking about uh, Islamophobia. Yeah. Whether this is a myth, uh, would, whether it is really existing, and the reasons why it appeared in the first place. So can you share some thoughts about uh, this topic uh, brother Talib? Uh Islamophobia. Um my thoughts, you know, mashallah, alhamdulillah, I uh entered into Islam and I accepted Islam in the state and I can recall uh, you know an environment around me after accepting Islam, I can recall people's perceptions of Islam during that time uh, and of course now and compare them to now. Um in my honest opinion Uh, you know, a phobia, if you define, understand what the word phobia means, arachnophobia, fear of spiders, uh, and acrophobia, fear of heights. Uh, a phobia generally is, is described as something that causes anxiety or distress. And generally, uh, most phobias, for example, if somebody's afraid of heights, uh, they avoid places where they're, uh, you know, where they may expose heights, uh, you know, uh, um, claustrophobia, you know, somebody who those people don't type of, really won't go inside of elevators and things like that. So if I look at the word Islamophobia and knowing and seeing my experience, having my experience in the US, I don't see people who who become anxious or who become distressed upon seeing Muslims or you know, hearing the word Islam or seeing any type of Islamic uh paraphernalia or objects or anything like that. In my honest opinion, um, 
it's uh, it's it's just basic. It's just basic um, prejudice or um, people who may be expressing or feeling that they have a particular superiority over people, uh, and and especially me as an African American, I can compare my experiences as growing up as a black man in the U.S. to some of the experiences that I see in general. And when I say in general, only what I see coming from blogs and things like that, um, and compared it to almost a type of a, a prejudice or race, racist um, attitude. People in general, when they start talking about Islam in a negative way, not they, they don't gain, they don't have anxieties or fears. They generally show anger and rejection. Mm-hmm. And and because of that, uh, I don't think it can be necessarily classified as a phobia. You know, my mother didn't develop, as soon as I became Muslim, she didn't automatically develop some type of fear of me. <laughs> you know, I don't see people walking in the road, um, you know, seeing a Muslim, some woman down the road walking with a niqab on, and people moving to the other side of the road and trying to shelter their children or something like that. <clears throat> people interact with Muslims on a daily basis. The president just had a Ramadan, you know, iftar and things like that. So uh, I think it's pretty much just uh, the same old type of thing that we've seen throughout the history of man, particular prejudice. Uh, it could be based on jealousy. It could be, uh, it could be founded on some factual information. I mean, you know, people do <clears throat> hate to see some of the, you know, uh, atrocities that they see occurring that some some Muslims do. But uh, in general, I think it's just an aspect of people, uh, the few people, say, for example, say in the United States, wanting to show a particular dominance over a particular other people to say that I'm better, or you're not as good as me, or what I have is better than yours, you know, this type of thing. Mm-hmm. The only thing uh, I wanted to ask you, Brother Talib, also, is that uh, there is a claim that uh, Muslims have contributed to this to this phobia, as they say, is this true? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I, you know, la uh, yukalifu Allahu nafsa illa wusaha. You know, um, and Allah subhanahu wa taala also says, you know, uh, you know, whomsoever Allah guides, can no one lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, and has no one to guide him. Yes. So, having said that, we can't make every person Muslim. If I Mm-hmm. This is an example. I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu was not able to bring his, his uncle into the fold of Islam, and he was next to and loved uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, I say that to say this. Um, simply, if every Muslim was doing his particular duty properly in the world, it does not mean that everybody would enter into Islam. At the same token, we can't... Um, say that people are not necessarily entering Islam simply because of the bad actions of Muslims. But having said that, people still consider us in terms of what we say we believe. And that's one thing that Muslims, especially Muslims who are people who are born Muslim, who are raised in Muslim countries, and have to understand that people take us more seriously then we take ourselves. Anything mm-hmm. that we do, because this deen is al haq because of that, absolutely everything we do falls under scrutiny. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it's extremely sensitive. You know, uh, I, I often use the comparison that if a Muslim does something, it's comparative to, say, a police officer doing something. Exactly. Right. If, I see, if I see a general, normal individual, some guy just messing around with the lock of a car, you know, he looks maybe just an average person, even the skiing maybe. And I see him tink- tinkering with the lock of a car. I'm going to tell the person to get away and, you know, don't do that. It's haram, whatnot. And I'll hold them to a certain, in my mind and in my heart, I'll hold them to a certain consciousness. I'll hold them to a certain level of responsibility. Mm. But if I see a, a, a police officer tinkering with the car as if he's going to do some particular crime or do something haram, I'm going to consider him more responsible than I would that average person. Why? Because they have a greater responsibility to survive Correct. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. We as Muslims must understand that, that we 
carry this being, that we are the representatives of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of our actions. That we are the representatives of Islam. So absolutely everything we do will be scrutinized. So, it, and because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created us in this particular, with, with Fitra, everyone has, every single human being, every single created, created being has an understanding of La Ilaha illa Allah. So their consciousness, even if it's subconscious, reflects and sees that person, that Muslim doing something wrong, he automatically rejects it, even if he doesn't want to reject it. You know, I've been in situations where some, I've been protected by Mus- by non-Muslims. You know, mm-hmm. they'll mm-hmm. come up to me and say, hey, you know, there's, I go to a restaurant and they say, hey, don't eat this particular vegetable soup because it has chicken stock in it or something like that. Mm-hmm. At the same token, if they see a Muslim behaving in the wrong way, I've seen people who have no concern about Islam, but check that Muslim based on what they understand how that particular Muslim should act. All right. So cool. every single small thing that you do is being witnessed, hmm. either by Allah or by individuals, and we have to be held accountable for it. So it's, 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 yes, it does. We we are the greatest perpetrators of Islamophobia. If in in this this pseudo word that I'm going to call it, this this false word. Because, uh, and I'll say quickly, because when I give dawah, the proof for me is this. When I give dawah, I don't necessarily have to prove correctness of la ilaha illallah. Yeah. What yeah. I've got to generally do is disprove or discredit the actions of Muslims to try and cut through all of that. Hmm. Hmm. And then possibly get the people to start to open up their hearts and, and their ears. I have to go through a particular explanation of, no, this is not a part of Islam. But, you know, these people are saying, lay, 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 lay. they're saying, law, right, bro, and they're cutting off heads, and they're doing this and doing that. I have to cut through all of that. I have to cut through the actions of Muslims to try to get non-Muslims to listen to me mm. about Islam. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Talib, for the insight. Uh, I think uh, you've opened our eyes uh, to, to a whole new level. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Rabbi. Thank you. This is just uh, just wonderful, Hatim. As a matter of fact, what the brother was saying, we experience this a lot. And when we're doing dawa, that is inviting people uh, towards Islam or presenting the basic teachings of Islam to them, we try our best as a point to tell them that look, at times you will see. Uh, the difference or you should know the difference between what Islam actually teaches Mm -hmm. and what Muslims uh, some of the Muslims are unfortunately doing in in Mm -hmm. their lives and as one of the reward brother uh, you know he's a scholar he mentioned that uh, luckily I met Islam before I met Muslims exactly so this is a very sorry state of affairs but it does hold weight Okay, now uh, now that we understand that the propaganda uh, about Islamophobia is not from the general public, yeah, of mm. of, of normal people, it's from the the state or yeah. the the regulations or the the people who are responsible in mm. in politics. So let us look at it in in a different angle, economically. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. What are the gains out of this? Well, you see, Hatim, if you look at the world in general uh, in this day and age. Uh, most of the world, except for a few, uh, you know, uh, places, they are moving away from spirituality and they're mm. going towards materialism. Exactly. Mm. They are going away from the unseen and they are only having faith in the seen. Yeah. Yes. They have removed the, let's say, the church, uh, synagogue, masjid separate from the state. The state, yeah. yes. Okay. So when you, when your God becomes materialism, all right, then anything that's going to reduce that is going to cause you major distress. Exactly. Uh, as an example, uh, let's take the example of Islam. Mm. Yes. Uh, it teaches simplicity. It teaches modesty. Yeah. Okay. It teaches equality. Mm-hmm. It's against racism. Brotherhood. It brotherhood. teaches brotherhood. Morality. It teaches morality, tolerance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just Giving. To, exactly. So, mm. so ju- just look at it. If, if more people get to know about these qualities, and they start adapting them out yeah. of their own free will. What impact will it have on the entertainment industry? Okay, yeah. let let us get something straight. Okay, so um, what we're saying is this is what Islam propagates. What about our other other faiths faiths in the in the world? Mm-hmm. They don't propagate the same thing. Well, they do. They they do up to a certain extent, but number of them have 
uh, made changes in them over the over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't say decades, but 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 hundreds of years. And uh, you know, one example is of of uh, interest or riba mm-hmm. on on banking, mm. uh, which was a common denominator. It was looked down upon. Mm. It was forbidden in all the uh, monotheistic Abrahamic faiths. Mm. And now, if you look at it, uh, it's you, permissible. It, it, they have made it permissible. Mm. Okay, uh, except for the tenets of Islam, which is still standing. And it will stay the same because it doesn't negotiate with uh, with anybody. And yeah. and and for morality, things like uh, the pornographic industry, exactly, yeah. which is a huge industry, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, prostitution. Yeah. You, you see, yeah, uh, the morals. And, and and recently, just to cut you off, uh, mm-hmm. Muhammad, recently the declaration of uh, same sex marriage, same sex uh, marriage acceptance, being legal, attempts, yeah. acceptance of uh, same so sex marriage. Yeah. This is something which was against we, all you, you uh, see, heavenly all, yeah. religions. You, you exactly. see, we are getting more and more towards a God godless society so mm-hmm. the actual struggle right now is between faith and no faith yes there was a time when you would have an interfaith dialogue mm-hmm. and you would talk about the doctrines of islam uh, uh, in, in comparison to the doctrines of christianity as an example yes. now a lot of your time and energy is spent convincing people that there is a god yes mm-hmm. so we're having a lot of uh, we're, we're facing a godless generation and it's it's just growing yeah. And and the other thing is uh, talking about morality. The definition of morality keeps on changing, except in Islam. If you go back 40 years back or 50 years back, and you look at Hollywood movies, you look at their ratings, and then you look at the ratings today. There's a huge difference. Mm. Same goes for the music industry. Mm. Same goes for uh, well, um, I won't say same, but in in an, in a certain degree, you can say the same about the pornography industry. Mm. Yes. Okay. Then you've got the gambling going on. Okay. So all the entertainment, it could be video games, it could be uh, music industry, it could be movie industry, the mm-hmm. cinema, okay? All these have certain interests which are common. Yeah. All right? So when anybody starts talking about spirituality, and, and you'll see a lot of people uh, who who hate Islam, they don't necessarily have strong Christian mm-hmm. roots. Yes. Yeah. You know, th- there are people who just say, well, I don't believe in anything. And, and now they, uh, they are getting, they, there's a certain uh, other group of element who say we worship Satan. Yeah. And they are demanding legitimacy. Yeah. That they need to be recognized. What what do you say? To, what do you say to um, to those who claim that why are Muslims making a big fuss out of this economical you know, growth that we we are gaining out of this materialism world? Because Muslims are our biggest customers. Mm. Yeah, Muslims are the ones who yeah. are you know buying alcohol. Muslims okay. are the ones who are uh, gambling. Muslims yeah. are the ones who are uh, participating in the entertainment yeah. business. Yeah, Muslims are the ones who are you know propagating uh, our, our movies and everything yeah. else. So you on one side as Muslims you contradict yourself. You yeah. say that uh, no, this is against our teachings, against our values, and on the other hand you're the our best customers. Well, we so we, yeah. we don't seem to understand you Muslims. We mentioned yeah. what, a while, what exactly <laughs> are you looking for? No, we yeah. talked about it a while ago, the difference between Islam, teachings of Islam and, and what Muslim. some Muslims are doing. Yeah. All right, I, I think we got another caller. We'll, we'll get to Ahmad. So yeah. we no, don't? I, okay. I think it's a second break. Guess, yeah? right. No, no, break? it's a second break. Okay. Okay. But before we go for a break, we just wanted to remind our listeners that they can call us on 24602058 24602058 when we come back from the break we'll pick up with ahmed okay. BMW Dream Drive. This season, luxury awaits you at Lulu. Shop and win six BMW X5 35i and other fabulous prizes. With every purchase of 10 reals, get a chance to win up to six BMW X5 35i and 30 icon products like 48-inch LED TVs, top-load automatic washing machines, air coolers, halogen air fryers, tablets, and lots more. Shop at Lulu today and stand to drive home your dream. Promotion valid till 5th August 2015. Lulu, where the world comes to shop. When I walk into my bank, I want to be greeted with prompt service. When I approach my bank, I want to be assisted with sound advice. When I call my bank, I want to be impressed with competent solutions. At Bank Soha, our journey towards service excellence begins with you. We are committed to supporting your ambitions with tailor-made services and efficient assistance, marking your journey with remarkable milestones. Make a difference to your banking experience with Bank Soha. Call 24730000 today. Life is a journey, and through this journey, we come across all challenges. These challenges makes us better human beings. We live for the pleasure 
of serving others and feeling the guidance of the Creator. Join us and explore the opportunities to overcome your difficulties this Ramadan. All right, everybody, welcome back to Life As It Is. I understand we have another uh, guest ca- uh, caller on the line. Today we have our second guest uh, on the line is uh, Dr. Sergio. Do we have them? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? Fine, Dr. Okay. Sergio. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Ramadan Kareem, Dr. Sergio. Wa anta bi khair, Doctor. So, Doctor, uh, we are talking today about a very uh, important topic, which is Islamophobia, and. Yeah. Um, as as a European person, uh, Dr. Sergio, and you've lived in the West for, for many years and then now you're settled in Oman, um, yeah. Yeah. what are your thoughts on this uh, topic? Um, well, you see, Islamophobia is, is, is a kind of fear um, and then it's a fear that provokes a reaction. And the reaction is based on, on, on the perception of those things that are seen as as a threat um, so to understand you will have to I think we will have to look at the fear um, it's, it's another way of, of uh, it's, it's another expression of uh, like racism in the past based on color mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. it's based on, on the perceived threat of a group of people who hold some uh, different views let's say um, yes and it is and uh, look as long as, as Islamophobia remains an idea, something in people's head. It's still negative, but it is not so bad. The problem is when when thoughts become words and words become action, Mm -hmm. and then you have a social issue, you have a a big problem. And um, is it it a problem now in Europe? Yes, it is. I mean, you just have to listen to the radio, watch the news, watch television, talk to people, and Islam and Muslims have become a topic... About which almost everybody has something to say, um, which is which is not so good because then people become like say animals in a zoo, and when when we focus too much on a group of people, we we make we kind of like we devoid them of of the common humanity that we all share, and we start looking at them as exotic. Yes. In the past, black people used to be exotic, or maybe Chinese people, or the Chinese, or Indians, and so forth. They were exotic, so people look at them, and people would look at them, and they would perceive them as somehow dangerous, maybe because they were unknown, and things that we don't know are things that we tend to fear. Now, Muslims are in, let's say. Muslims are the people who are different, so different that that kind of like people look at uh, as if Muslims were not human. So that's, that, that is a bad development. Um, and of course, in Europe, it has to do also with immigration. That's one of the issues. Suddenly, there are a lot of Muslims, and not as many as people would think, but more than before, who are around. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. On the other hand, of course, you know, there are some, some financial troubles, troubles and problems. So people try to, when, when, when things go bad with the economy, people try to find somebody who is the guilty one. Why are things not going well? And so in many, in many societies, people will say, look at Muslims, they don't work, they are lazy, they, they just profit from the system, they benefit from the system and so forth. Um, and you have international events like, uh, of course, like um, 9-11 and everything that happened after that and that happened in Europe too. So it's a combination of things that actually promote fear and it is a natural reaction that when we feel afraid, that we want to defend ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. And of course, but, I mean, we are rational beings, so we, we should we should look at our fears, we should study our fears, and maybe that's what's not happening now. Um, mm-hmm. I think our societies have to have to focus more to try and understand the fear, and is is that fear well founded? Otherwise, it's just plain and ugly discrimination. Right. Um, Dr. Sergio, Dr. Sergio um, I just wanted to ask you also. Now, um, from an, a European point of view, what should be the proper uh, reaction of Muslims? 
now that they are labeled in, in in different forms you see many many things have to do with the with the discourse or the narrative mm. the stories that societies tell themselves for example is is racism or discrimination an exclusively western thing it is not people human beings are discriminated everywhere in the world almost in every family even yes yes um, the difference is that you see when we grow up in the west we grow up we grow up with the discourse of uh, equality. So Muslims too, they grow up in the West and they, they are taught in primary school and everywhere that we are all equal. And then in their own lives, then, may, then probably a lot of them don't, don't feel that they are treated equally. But also because we are trained, we are, we are taught, we are educated in the West to, be, to, stand, to stand up for our rights. They, they become also, uh, they, they speak up. So that's why it's more noticeable in the West than elsewhere. For, for instance, in other, in, other, in other societies, Christians are discriminated. But because they belong to a setting where you don't, you, you, you believe that you are not equal anyway, so shut up, don't complain. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't say anything. But in the West, no, everybody, we believe that people are equal and that people should stand up for their rights. That's one thing. And secondly, many of the migrants who go to Europe go to Europe and to the West exactly because this is what they want. They want that equality. They want those rights. But then when they arrive, they realize that, yes, one thing, on the one hand, you have the discourse, you have the narrative, the story, what we tell ourselves. And on the other hand, you have, I mean, the everyday reality that if you apply for a job and your name is Mohammed or Fatma, and, and even though you have the same degrees, the same qualifications as somebody else who has another name, you will not get the job. In many cases, it's like mm. this. So, there, you see, you have on the, one, on the one hand the fear, you have on the other hand the, the, the conflicting messages that we are giving to mm-hmm. people. So we tell people, yes, you are, you are equal, you should, you should um, demand that your rights be respected, and you should do that. But then on the other hand, we, we are not putting that into practice. So that creates, that creates tension. Um, and as I said before, part of the, the, I, part of the view of the other as being exotic is that it is very easy then to, to work on the basis of stereotypes. Mm-hmm. And that's happening now, kind of like now you, you think Muslims and Muslims are all the same. Um, and whereas it's only a small minority, some 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 people who are have small problems fraction. who react in violent ways, but because of because people see the other almost as, as not being the same type of human as if they were from another planet. Mm. Um, so, but, uh, Dr. Sergio, uh, I would like to. Because that's why. That's why I think. Okay. Um, one way of going against this would be to, to do away with the, with the label of exotic. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is happening. For instance, I know, I read once of a, of a mosque in Germany that they built, and part of the mosque is just glass. So that anybody from, out, from the outside, non-Muslims, could look into the mosque and, and see what's happening there. That's a brilliant so idea. Example, that's a very concrete mm-hmm. way of Transparency. You know, undermining mm-hmm. fear and stereotypes. Just to see we're mm-hmm. just human beings. We come here, we pray, we chat, sometimes we share some food. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's what we have to do. Um, not emphasize what not emphasize what makes us makes us uh, being exotic or mm-hmm. interesting because we are strange. Mm-hmm. So it's more about the things that make us realize that we share a common humanity. So do you think, uh, Doctor, that Muslims are actually playing a positive role or they're doing enough in, in order to, let's say, introduce themselves to the people uh, who don't have uh, enough information about Muslims and they're just getting second-hand information from the mainstream media? Um, of course. I think one of the good things that came out of the 9-11 period was that the Muslim community became a lot more open. Mm-hmm. Before, before mosques 
where for Muslims and usually you know the, the whole the whole discussions in the fiqh whether non-Muslims should be allowed to come in or not or this or that and you have purity issues and so forth. Mm-hmm. After 9-11 on the part of the Muslim communities at least the ones that I know mm-hmm. they they became very interested in, in, in dialogue in welcoming people so there were open the open door days where when people could come to the mosque, just drink tea, eat some halawiyat, mm-hmm. talk, ask questions. Um, so that is happening. That is happening, of course. Okay. Yeah. But um, you see, also, on, the, on top of that, you have the issue, for example, in universities, people started offering courses about Islam, and they focus on the big people of Islam, the big thinkers, um, even Sufism, because in the West, Sufism is perceived kind of like the tolerant, mm-hmm. uh, the mm-hmm. universal, universally welcoming, uh, say, fragment or, or, or segment of, of the Ummah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also people travel, and then when, when Westerners go to Muslim countries, they see that in Muslim countries there is also discrimination. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of things that they wouldn't agree with. So when they go back home, Kind of like this idea comes up that, okay, we are giving Muslims so many rights, but Muslims in their own countries are not giving those rights to non-Muslims. Hmm. So Love then, the standards. kind of like, say, Western Muslims who are completely Western, who agree with the Muslim, uh, the Western idea of um, equality and freedom and so forth, they are being punished for what other Muslims somewhere else do which is also unfair. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I, I think a lot of it has to do with with the issue that we are living in communities that right. are very mixed. We are living in communities that influence other communities. Mm-hmm. We're living in communities where some people are kept down because mm. of ideas or laws. For example, in the West, I, I, I used to teach teachers of Islamic religious education. And the, the Muslim teachers, when they, when they, for instance, because they weren't teaching Islam, so when they used to go to certain schools, they could go, they could wear the hijab up to the door of the school. When they reached the gate of the school, they had to remove, take off the hijab, mm-hmm. walk without a hijab on to their classrooms, and as soon as they entered their classroom, because it was the Islamic religious education classroom, they could put their hijab back on, which is a very <laughs> schizophrenic. Somehow. way of looking at life mm-hmm. and education and school. So, um, Dr. S- Dr. Sergio, yes. thank you very much uh, for your input. So yes. We have another 15 minutes to wrap up the uh, show. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sergio, for your so, contribution. And we hope I to hear from I, you soon. If I, if I would like to say only one thing, is yes, one yes. more to finish, is we have to rediscover... Um, our common humanity. Mm-hmm. We have to we have to realize that everything in the world has like a domino effect, mm. and say, um, and we have we have to be aware of that. But the way that we deal with others, non-Muslims or Muslims, will come back to us somehow in today's world. Um, and so, if we want to work on this, uh, we have to work on on. On, on, on how we deal with human beings, mm-hmm. whether it's in Europe or not in Europe. Um, but in, in the European case, I think the, the, the negative thing is that Islamophobia is a betrayal of European values. Mm. When, Europe is, when Europe behaves in an Islamophobic way, Europe, Europe is betraying its own, its own development, its own conviction, and that's why it hurts more. Subhanallah. That's powerful words. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sergio. My pleasure. My and we pleasure. hope to hear from you soon, inshallah, in inshallah. other episodes as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Jazakallahu khairan. I think, you know, he, he touched upon a lot of interesting things, you know, when it comes to the idea of propagating Islam the right way. Yes. And uh, we are not doing a lot, you know, when it comes to propagating, you know, for the true message of Islam. Mm-hmm. And I was talking, you know, before the call about the idea of education. You know, being educated about your own religion and also educating people about, you know, the religion of Islam. 
uh, either we have this kind of shyness or to humility level that, you know, we don't want to educate about people. We might make mistakes or whatever, you know, or this is the job of Sheikh Hatim, you know, to, to, uh, to preach and so on. I think we need to go out, out of that, you know, circle and educate people about, you know, Islam and so on. We have another call. Salam alaikum. Hi, hello, Claudio speaking from Salala. How are you? Fine, Welcome. thank you. How are fine, you? Thank you. How are you? Fine, thanks. Fine. Uh, listen, I've just uh, listened to the discussion uh, concerning the Islam, and I'm Italian. Sorry for my English if I make uh, some mistake because no, it's, it's wonderful. Awesome. It's perfect. Okay, uh, what I, I would like to say that I'm not agree with the previous discussion with this uh, American guy, but I forget his name. Dr. Sergio or the other gentleman? No, no, the other one. No, no, Sergio has a very Ta- nice speech Ta- and he explains yeah. everything right. The only, the only things that I would like to add uh, that this uh, phobia that they say concerning the Muslim is not correct because uh, it's the media that creates this phobia. Because uh, like Italian and like I hear, we had a lot of refugees coming from many parts of Africa, mm-hmm. many Arab countries. And uh, for me, to be Muslim it doesn't mean to be terrorist. Mm-hmm. And I try even to explain uh, to many of my friends that Islam is a peaceful religion. And this, I have to say thank you to the Omani people that they teach me what means the word of Islam. Mm-hmm. Because uh, in the past I was working in other, uh, another Arab country, I don't want to mention it where, that uh, I never learned nothing uh, good about that. Yes. Okay. But here I have a lot of Omani friends, and uh, they will explain me, and they sh- and they show me that everything has to be peacefully. So the problem in Italy is that many media, many TV, many radio, many newspaper, they don't uh, explain that terrorism is terrorist is not has nothing to do with the Islam, mm-hmm. and this is the problem, because like we know, the media they want create terror to sell more the newspaper, mm. to have the people under control. Mm-hmm. This is right. the only one that I want uh, uh, Thank you very the much. radio yeah. to the people understand that they have to make more publicity concerning the Islam, because the Islam at the end is very, very close to the Christian religions. We have just a few little difference from Jesus and Mohammed. Yes. Mm-hmm. At yes. the end, it is the same. Mm. Yes. Thank you very much you for very the much wonderful for input. Thank you. thank you. And we do agree terrorists don't have a religion. Yeah. And I think, you know, like he, he also c- discussed the idea of media and uh, the idea of double standards. You mm-hmm. know, when a Muslim, for example, acts or behaves in a, a wrong way, um, people, you know, um, try to to talk about it in a very um, big, you know, like form. His religion is made the center point of the whole discussion. You know, like it will be the the center of the whole discussions, the channels and so on. While if, you know, non-Muslim, you know, does the exact the same kind of action, nobody will refer to his religion or her religion. I I, I came across this, uh, this gentleman on the Internet. His name is Nathan Leon. And he's written this wonderful book, The Islamophobia Industry. Industry, yeah. Okay. And one of the things that I caught from his short interview was that the phenomena of foreign enemy domestic threat. Mm. And what it's doing is that by creating this boogeyman, which is far, far away and saying, oops, it's just coming. It's almost here. Are you Mm. ready? It's coming. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're distracting from the local issues, like Mm. the killing of blacks by cops in in, Mm. in America, which is just growing and growing in frequency and, and and, and seriousness and the, the shootings at schools or, or, or the black churches or mm. cinemas or malls. Yeah. So, so the thing is, uh, people need to wake up and they need to wise up and they need to understand the issues which are closer to home. Mm. And, mm. and if they, if they keep on scaring themselves with this threat, fear is going to get to them. Yeah. You know, and they're saying there's a, there's a more chance that you'll get hit by a car then you'll actually get hit by a terrorist. Hmm. Okay. There, there's some really, uh, you know, cute statistics out there. So a lot of it is, is, is perception management, yeah, so to speak. Exactly. And, and we're talking about perception when you saw, hmm. when you said media, just, just, just look at it in, in, in a different angle, yeah. how they perceive, they, they, they elude other people. Yeah. Now, for example, if you look at the movies, and you see an Italian, you automatically associate that with mafia. mafia. 
Exactly. Yeah? If you see a Chinese in a movie, you associate with Kung Fu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you see an Arab, then it, there's, there's Terrorist. a bomb somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and, and, and the strange that's the case. The Russian, the for example, known by, you know, like the enemy and, you know, they try and terrorize. Yes. The red threat. threat. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're trying yeah. to rise up yeah. again. And, and the strange thing is that uh, most of the people, they honestly don't know that a lot of Arabs are not of Muslim descent. Exactly. There are people of other faith who are Arab. As a matter of fact, only almost one fifth of the population of the Arabs. Of, uh, of Muslims of is, Muslims. is yeah. actually Arabs. Arabs. Arabs yeah. And A- if you 18% look, on exactly. And if you look at it, they are the one who are most demonized in in Hollywood. Yeah. Yes. This is this is a tragedy. But but the masses buy them because we're lazy. We don't want to do research. We just want somebody to give us everything like pre-chewed food, and we just swallow it. That's yeah. it. And, you know, like, I think, Hatim, we were discussing the idea that, you know, we still have some Muslims who are actually involved in a lot of, you know, non-Islamic, you know, actions. When you were talking about supporting, you know, like, projects which are not Islamics, mm-hmm. or they, they tend also to support, you know, like, some of the not allowed, you know, like, deals, you know, for example, mm-hmm. in, in the Islamic, you know, community. Uh, you know, and this is back to the idea. Muhammad gave an, uh, a few examples yeah, of uh, about, you know, <laughs> yeah. of some of the industries yeah, in the, in the, that are really creating this this uh, illusion about the Islamophobia, and actually, some the majority of the shares of these organizations are, are, are owned by Muslims. Yeah, this, yeah. This is a, and, and this which tragic, brings us to really which brings us to the next point, which is you know what are we the enemies among money? ourselves? Yeah, yeah. yeah. some yeah. Muslims are the enemies yeah. of Islam themselves. Yeah. And and the, this is also, we need to raise another question, okay? We need to distinguish between real Muslims and, you know, Muslims. Pseudo, pseudo-Muslims. Uh, yes, because unfortunately... We What's have a pseudo-Muslim? <laughs> by name, by yeah. birth, by, by birth, labor. You know, yeah, and sometimes, you know, maybe they, in reality they are not Muslims, but they have to wear this mask of Islam in order to deceive other people around them. You see, Hatim, we've always had traitors throughout history. I mean, this is not a shock. Yeah. 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 So you and must know the source and 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 the instructions yeah. of the source. Don't yeah. don't take it from somebody who has a long beard only. Yeah. One exactly. of one of the callers who I don't remember who they they've said that uh, Islamophobia when it's just in the mind, yeah, it's a, a negative thought. Yeah. But the most dangerous part when it becomes into it turns into an action. Words yes. and then which actions, is yeah. uh, invasion mm. and and, and, yeah. and bombing other countries. We, we look, and yeah, and and see the thing is on an individual level we've seen incidences of like. Uh, you know, throwing petrol bombs into the masjids or snatching the hijab of a, of a sister yeah. mm-hmm. or harassment in public areas or on social media or harassment of the neighbors. And, and while Muslims are up to a certain degree to blame why they didn't interact with them, why yeah. they didn't introduce them to Islam and to Muslims, yeah, why then, they were again, again, living in a silo. Ma- ma- again, mm-hmm. Muhammad, even if they're living in a silo, mm-hmm. does that give the right for others to you know no it doesn't i'm be, just saying this is no no no, no, no 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 it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't give you the, the right. thing yeah. is this is one of the reasons the mm-hmm. causes if you want to look at yeah. it we should be out there we should have interfaith dialogues we should meet up with our neighbors with our get involved yeah, in I our think, community Muhammad, they, are, they are propagating that uh, freedom of speech and freedom the, the right of to practice double your standards. own religion mm-hmm. and then they have these double standards you know mm-hmm. they, they don't make sense yeah mm-hmm. They don't make like, sense like because when, when if, talk- if I choose to be isolated, if I choose to be in my own closed community, mm-hmm. and they have other closed communities in, in the and West that are, not, that, are, mm-hmm. that, are, that are not Muslims, they don't go and you know intrude yeah. them. Yeah. They don't go and disturb it's, them. It's fear. They, double, yeah, double, it's, double standards. They are. There are. There will always be. And like Brother Talib said, something very wonderful that uh, we, being Muslims, will always be under the microscope. Mm. All right. Yeah. Anybody else can do whatever they want, but even if we do something by mistake. Uh, we'll get the book thrown at us and, you know, we're being scrutinized all the time. What I think yeah. that should happen is what you said at the beginning, which is very, very important. Now is uh, the the the, uh, the battle is between uh, the people who believe that there is a creator and the godless people yeah. mm-hmm. against the godless people. Yeah. yeah. So I think we should join hands mm-hmm. with the people of all faiths. Yeah. yeah, against the other the other team. Exactly. Because spreading because, corruption exactly. online. Exactly. What, what happens most of the time is even when we have all these interfaith, you know, dialogues, okay, there will be another force that works, you know, behind the scenes to value the differences more than the similarities mm-hmm. or the things that, you know, we can work together. And unfortunately, we have to pay the price. Yeah. See, what I would like to add to this is like uh, Dr. Sergio was saying that about that masjid, half of it is glass and people can actually see what's going yeah. on. Well, I would like to share, uh, you know, this fact with uh, with our friends, with our listeners who don't know the Grand Masjid. 
mm-hmm. is open daily except for Fridays from I think eight, in the to, morning, eight to eleven eight to in 11. the morning. Yeah. And people of all faith and no faith are invited to come, uh, yeah. have a chat, stop by, have tea, coffee, dates, yeah. and 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 have a friendly discussion. Yeah. So it is available closer to home, and we encourage all people to avail this opportunity, get to know a Muslim. We've come across people who've lived here for 20, 30 years, and sadly, no Muslim has ever introduced them to to Islam. So yes. I would like to take this platform to invite all our friends who are from a different faith than Islam to please drop by at the uh, at the masjid. And, and we want to change the the conception of Muslims. It's not about converting. Yeah, It's, it's about, just conveying. It's, about calling. Conveying it's, the, the bridge, calling. it's building bridges. Yeah. It's getting to know each other. Exactly. So tomorrow you can say, no, wait a minute. What media is saying is wrong. I have lived with Muslims. They're not like this. This mm. is what their book says, you know. I've I've been there. I've, I've spent time with them. Yeah. The other message that I want to send out to um, the non-Muslims living in the Muslim countries and living the peace and harmony uh, with the Muslims, they have to propagate this message exactly. out. Exactly. When they go back to their homes, yeah. they and should they do. You know, propagate. By the way, they do. Yeah, mo- yeah. Most of them, yeah. they do. But I think they can do more in, in propagating and defending uh, the Muslims that yeah. Muslims are not what uh, they they see on the news. Yeah. And I think, you know, we also need to emphasize, you know, the fact that, you know, Muslims have to educate themselves, okay? Because we suffer, uh, you know, because of our ignorance, mm-hmm. okay? We have a problem of ignorance and we will continue suffering if we don't get, you know, like uh, uh, educated about, you know, our own uh, teachings. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. Yeah, we, mm. we, we, we need to build bridges. And the first way or the first line of defense is get involved with your neighbor, get involved with your community, go to the local uh, local masjid. Invite people uh, to your Yeah, home. invite people to your home. Let the kids play. Let them feel we are all humans. We have a lot more common than what we, we don't have common. The, and 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 the the message go to non-Muslims is you guys are ambassadors of the Creator. You're under the microscope, whether you like it or not. Behave in the best possible way that you can. Whatever knowledge you have, build upon it. But don't wait for the knowledge to get to a certain level. You need to convey the message, whatever you already know. With this, we would like to wrap up today's show. Hatim, please tell us what's coming up next. Yes, tomorrow we have uh, a special topic, which is modern poverty with Brother Ahmed Al-Mutani. So see you tomorrow, inshallah, with a brand new show from me, Hatim Al-Absalam, Engineer Muhammad Farooq, and Brother Ahmed Al-Mutani. This is Life As It Is. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Never think of change. Be the change. Thank you for being a part of this amazing journey. Life as it is. Life as it is. Here on the Nation Station. Radio, Sultan of Oman, 